Causey Mark podcast show. The following is recommended science fiction films to watch. A Trip to the Moon, 1902, directed by film pioneer George Melies. A Trip to the Moon is in fact a short film. It's one of the most influential movies of all time. Mes- Metropolis, 1927. Metropolis is a dizzy assault for surreal visuals and its century ideas tells the story of a gorgeous, futuristic society that is powered by people forced to toil beneath paradise. It's a style you sound familiar. It's because the plot has been utilised a number of times over the years. Moment of Politics is worth watching for its visual brilliance. It's said to have been appreciated for many years. It's also appreciated for what it means. It's not only science fiction movie history, but a movie history in general. Directed by Flitz Lang. The Invisible Man. The 1993 The Invisible Man brings one of the best adaptations of the H.G. Wells famous novel. A lot of that comes from the Claude Rains as an intent, the actor playing The Invisible Man. But don't forget, it was all directed by James Well, a man who also directed Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein for Universal. I guess this film is a sardonic wit combined with genuine tension. The special effects hold up nicely, as well as those that one might describe them as a mineral. And you can see John Carradine in a very early bit role. The day the earth stood still. With uh, with sisterfication, generally discouraging gems, like the day the earth stood still, isn't hard to see why the nineteen fifties was regarded as a golden age for science fiction. Like part of a string of films with this uh, from this period, the film uses science fiction to make some fairly strong political arguments, particularly with regards to the subject of thermophobia, as one is impressed by the still impotent vigils of performances of the film. Keep in mind that the movie is very clear its view of humanity. We want to explore, but we also don't want to deal with anything we don't understand. Ampherville, 1965 Long, very freedom, endless, weird career of French new wave icon Jack Jean Loc Goddard. Amphaville might be the amateur's artist's most whacked out effort of all time. Amphaville is strange and relentless. Also, a sense of humour, which is quite possibly too depressing even for the gallows. At the same time, it's also abstract. One can't help but laugh at times. Amphaville features a perfect. Pet features performances from Eddie Constantine and Anna Corinne. As they try to make something of the glossy Dexaton surroundings in Amphifield, also uses the element of the non var films to create a sense of dread and comes a place of truly unknown. Oddly, though, the film should mo- movie suggests on several occasions that the unknown is an entity on itself. Space Odyssey, 2001, Space Odyssey, two, 1968. Stanley Kubrick's 2001 film, A Space Odyssey, is one of the greatest science fiction films of all time. It's debatable, but I think it is. Few films are debated and discussed as much as this one. That goes standard with most of the Kubrick films, but A Space Odyssey is something else altogether, despite the fact this is very much a movie. A strongly one like that. Two thousand one sends you feel like an actual being. You you don't watch this movie. So much you simply let it grab you by the wrist and pull you in slowly. It's an abyss with one of the heavies 
the faintest possibility of the stars on the other side. The world on wire. 1973. Rainer Wenzler, by Fosberger, directed astonishing 40 feature films along other projects. World on the Wire, originally released as a two part miniseries, might be the most credible fil- films in the library of this most controversial film workers. In broad terms, World on the Wire is about the potential of reality, specifically about the potential for more than one. There will be more of the few things that come along easily in watching the 205 minute titan of a film. World of War is dry humour and terrifying improbabilities combined with great performances. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, 1977. Steven Stilberg, his best fantasy science fiction films are a single combination of countless influences. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Take some of the basic concepts of the day that looks still. As longer character studies, it puts the whole thing under a considerably brighter light than most movies about alien visitors. The end in this film remains a spectacle of greatest order, but a journey that gets to that point is perfectly remarkable. Blade Runner, 1982. Any film, thing about space, science fiction films, you have to mention Blade Runner. Author Philip K. Dick. Well, director Robert Rudley Scott has starred Harrison Ford. A breakout performance is from Good Hargo and Dale Edna and Sean Young. Take Dick's story into a fairly different direction. The desperation and loathing in hurt of humanity's creatures is constant theme. Blade Runner is beautiful as it's tragic. While films and for its and soundtrack are iconic nowadays, it is also a great story. Back to the Future, 1985. Back to the Future never lives too deeply or darkly into the story of a teen who is transported back to 1985. Bio DeLorean simply powers through infusing a glittering cast, particularly Michael G. Fox as a teenager, finds himself stuck in a bygone era. Strange Trent doesn't isn't bad either. Terminator two, Judgment Day nineteen ninety one. Terminator two, Judgment Day was indeed the war final word on these characters and, and its universe. The movie shifts. Oh, and what's going to go from killer, cyborg, to protect her, pitting him against a super, superior machine, the endless, awesome Bert, Bert Patrick, with early 80s Los Angeles as a battleground. And you also get Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. A Matrix, 1999. While the movie can't help but feel slightly dated, it's at least odd since its style was copied and ripped off literally hundreds of times after its release. The Matrix is one of the good, one of the old great time films of science fiction. It takes Colin Reeves in the vehicle, works well for his story and a quiet theory. It tells of a story that explodes into an even bigger universe of inner generations. Fight scenes hold up extremely well. It's pretty difficult on the whole but to get pulled in by the furious energy of the Rose sisters brought to their most famous work. Paparekia, 2006. Science fiction and anime work go together quite well, and there are quite a dozen examples, but we'll get sticking with Sasha Kuyer's Cons, Paparekia, not the most famous anime movie of all time, Nevertheless, one of the most incredible achievements in animation history, a sprawling of story, realities, madness, dreams, and desire, Paparica is a dazzling descent into overwhelming sights and sounds. Children and the Men, 2006 Our own actual future seems to be a constant doubt, so it's easy to be wrapped up in something that feels real, 
any sense of the word. Children, man, isn't just as pressing, suffocating, hopeless conversation about the days to come. The scariest part of the way things are going, a timeline of this could be taken in its best case scenario. And the final one we're going to say today, and I know it's going to be other people thinking far better than me, please leave your comment, is Ex Machinia 2014. Beyond a haunting, uncomfortable performance by Oscar Isaac, Ex Machinia gets into some pretty head edgy topics. Some argue it's a bit high-minded, but it's no question that Extreme Engineer explores some essential topics, including evolution, the relationship of humanity to machines, what it means to the relationship of humanity, shares with itself. Extreme Engineer also offers the most quietly instinct, impressive of visuals and special effects in recent memory. You've been listening to the whole Sophia podcast show, and these are science fiction films I recommend you should watch. It's up to you. It's only an opinion, folks.